Sometimes it's the little thing. Actually, it's always the little things. They are always there. But who is noticing them? Who is in touch with them? There are no ordinary moments. You just open your eyes. You can witness the extraordinary right in your own backyard. Like my good friend, Jeff Cron does. He shoots from his kitchen window and focuses on beauty that most people take for granted or completely miss, even though it's right in front of them. Partly, it's out of necessity, but mostly, it's because he has always been in touch with himself, whether he is cruising with the bees or soaring with the birds. Grace is something that he has always been blessed with. This is his story. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Yo! What's up, dude? What's up, Kenna? What's up, man? I finally... It's been so long. Yeah. I'm so glad to get up here to see you, man. Yeah, God, it's been long. Long, long too long. I mean, I saw you on the side of the road to give you some yeah, turtles last like, year. For two seconds. For two seconds, but now I'm, I'm finally stoked because he loves turtles. So, yeah. we go way back, man. I mean, to our BMX days. Yeah. But more importantly, I think the thing we bonded more than even BMX was just we animals. Would, was animals, man. We go right. So this is the pond, man. This yep. thing is sick. Yeah. This is sick. Look at this. Here's the David. Oh my this gosh. Is a map turtle right yeah, there. man. So you got like a really cool um, like community thing going on here, but it's all animals that you can keep in uh, in Jersey, huh? Yep. Right on, dude. This little what's that? A what? Western, Western painted turtle. Right on, yep. Man. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you conceptualize this or what? Like, yep. So this was your design? Yep. I'm digging it, man. I like the fact that you have just, you've created a situation where they have to come over here to lay eggs. Yep. You know, so they can't really climb out. There's a wall. I love this, man. But you've had some interesting things happen this summer. <laughs> uh, yeah, a nice bear decided to come in and take a swim. Oh, crap, man. And uh, just destroyed the whole liner. Had to have it... Uh, all ripped out and basically redone this whole wetland filter over here uh -huh. which is how which is what keeps the water so crystal clear wait that's a filtration right there yep that's really sick so it's like a bio filter yeah 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 that's like exactly it, what it is that is sick so the, the water is getting pumped what is this it, it almost creates like a stream then so it's getting yeah. sucked out over it's here it's getting pumped through the pump over there okay. and then it has the hose that goes into the wetland filter so there's a wall here Yep. And it creates a sump there. Yep. All right, because I was wondering, how do you get the water to flow so evenly over that slate? But now I understand. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense, man. So what, what essentially uh, biofiltration is, is it's, it, it allows the, the beneficial bacteria uh, to break down the nitrogenous waste and all that yep. good stuff. And it flows through this river rock and it creates its own kind of filtration. Plus you got plants yep. which are growing in there and they're absorbing any of the uh, biological waste as well. That's really sick, man. Actually, when it, this was first built, this was just a, uh, it went up to a shallow area. Okay. So the water was about this deep, and I just had a rock there for the turtles to get on. And when I, the water just wasn't clear at all. Right. So I went to this place, and uh, the guy promised me that, you know, that this would make crystal clear water no matter the heat no matter yeah, anything sun, yeah yep and uh man they were 100 percent right that's because really even impressive. through the hottest of the hottest. of the humid day oh there's a, soft, there's a shell. soft shell yeah yeah there's one of the florida soft shells that's so cool yeah so so even during the hottest days and most sun 
Um, there's no UVB on this? No UVB sterilization? Uh, yeah, in the, okay, in the filter. In the filter. That helps is. too. That's yep. a great, you know, that's a great thing. I gotta be honest, I'm digging this because, you know, you can really see all the animals doing their thing in here. Tell me about turtles, man. Like, was it, like, what's the deal? I know, but for the folks out there, you know, like, how'd you get into turtles? I got into turtles when I was like five years old and just going out with my cousin in New York and looking for painters yep. and snappers and that's, I've just been into it ever since. Crazy. And man. luckily I was able to build this and have all these other species in here which I never would have dreamed of having. And it's crazy too for us because um, it was a couple of years ago now, you contacted me on Facebook, I think yep. it's Facebook. Yeah. Because we hadn't talked in a little while. Uh, and you know, we were pretty, we, we hung out a lot. Like, cause yeah. I was living not far from here, riding my bike. Yeah. And he would always drive up from Jersey and we'd ride together, but it was totally funny, man. Like if we got burned out on riding, it was like, let's go, let's go look for turtles. And uh, that's all we did, man. We were the two lunatics. I think that, and we would sing Nine Inch Nails songs <laughs> at a high volume in yes. the car and piss everyone off. Yep. Uh, that was us. We bonded as brothers over turtles and BMX, but if I'm being honest, when it came to BMX, there was just no comparison. Jeff wasn't good. He was great. For my money, we're talking on his way to being Dave Mira great. But it all came to an abrupt end when the forks on his bike broke apart on a routine trick. When you got hurt, like in 94, was it 94, 93. right? 93. 93? Yeah. Wow. So it was, was it October or something? Uh, July. July of 93. Yeah. Man. 23 years. 23 years. Like, what was, I don't know, what goes through your mind when that happens, man? And I, a, a, a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> a lot of stuff goes through your mind. Uh, some of it not so good. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. But um, like you said, like for the first couple of years there, I was just so totally lost. And when I got my driver's license, it just the whole world opened up to me. Yeah. I could just get in my car and I could go out and drive around. And what really got me into the animals was deer and big brack box and I started that in 99 and I would just go out with my uh, with my Canon GL2 camera and would just videotape deer huh. and, and bears and it wasn't until uh, 2006 that I actually picked up a digital camera because I didn't think my hands would work well enough to push the shutter down Okay. because in 2002 I bought a 35 millimeter camera and the button was just so hard to push down that I got frustrated with it and junked it and then when I got a Canon Digital Rebel in 2006 I was at a Cabela's and I said let me check that camera out push the button down so easily and I was like wow this is like the dream for me mm -hmm. and my whole thing was to get pictures of a big white tail buck and I was able to do that in 2006 and then in 2007 I started to learn how to use the camera manually and you know shoot everything the exposure the shutter speed all that manually on birds in my backyard so then I started getting into birds <laughs> So then I became like a huge birder. And then a couple of years later, I started getting into dragonflies. So then I would go out in July and August and just shoot basically dragonflies all day from my car, which is very hard to do. <laughs> uh, like I was gonna say, man, how do you find dragonflies uh, well, driving around the road? Your eyes must, you have eagle eyes. Yes, and I go to certain uh, lakes and ponds and dragonflies are all around ponds gotcha. so i would just pull up next to a pond and with you know limbs and uh plants just strictly shoot them off of that wow and it's very very hard to get good dragonfly shots from your car i mean it'd be easy if you could just walk up to them right. because you have to 
uh, you know, has to land in the right position. And it's, it's just very difficult. It, it seems like, you know, in some ways, you know, I remember you, like, we were hyperactive guys, you know, like totally hyperactive kids. Has, has your, has the accident kind of changed the way you think? you know, and, and, and what your personality has become? Like, to be that patient to wait for dragonflies, or? No, not, no? no You're no. still a lunatic? Yeah, still <laughs> a lunatic, but, uh, you know, I have a lot of patience. Uh, I'll sit for hours and hours and hours just to get the shot that I want. Gotcha. So. You know what it reminds me of, though? It's like, because you used to flatland freestyle, and for those of you that are watching um, that are animal folks, when you ride flatland, or even, even ramps, you know, you become obsessed and to learn one trick takes hours of or work so it's kind of even. days right so i mean i think it's a similar part of your brain yeah now that i think about it you know like you're that patient to learn a trick you're it's that patient like to get the shot when i go out to to get a shot it's like learning a new trick for me no way it's life is one big link it's a trick right yeah so like you you've dialed in this whole new way of thinking but you still seem to have so much enjoyment with everything around you oh, man. i love my oh. obviously there's no comparison but i can identify with jeff's transition in life when i lost bmx i thought well who am i what am i going to do but I realized that you just go back to the foundation of who you really were. These animals have been part of our lives since we were children, making it a big part of how we identify who we are now. Jeez. <laughs> so here we have my camera set up. No way. For shooting my little bird uh, set up out there that I got from a professional bird photographer. And the way he gets his pictures is either by calling him, but he has a setup. Okay. I mean, it's a lot more elaborate than mine. Well, what do you mean by a setup? Uh, you know, just uh, like a, a perch oh, okay. there for them to land on. Okay. And, you know, a lot of times I'll have a bird feeder up there and they'll land on either one of the trees just to wait to get on there. And then I can shoot shots right on there. And, uh, this lens here is for my handheld stuff on my butterfly garden out there. Right on. Shoot a lot of monarchs. You're saying you're getting into the moths too, right? Yeah, yeah, moths definitely. You, uh, how many species you identify around the house? Uh, probably like 15 or 20, which isn't that many. No? But only like five years. That's pretty good, man. So it's cool because you, you're not just as fixated on the large animals. You kind of see everything, nope. huh? I got into from the biggest to the smallest. Right on. What's the best thing you've ever shot out here? What are you most proud of? What photo? Uh, just out this window? Yeah. I would probably say a red belly woodpecker. The red belly woodpecker? It's not like exotic or anything, but for me, getting them on that setup over there has been pretty tough. But down there. Is, is that it? Is the picture, yep. This one? Which one is this? The red belly woodpecker. Right here. Yep, not the one next to it. Yep. This one? Yep. No that was, way. That was shot right out the... Right out the window. Right out the window, yeah. Sick. All these are yours, though. Yep. That's insane. Yep. How many pictures do you think you have? Uh, thousands and thousands. Yeah. Man, that's awesome, dude. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's good to be back in touch with you, man. The yeah. last couple of years to share this passion. Now, as, uh, I guess we're adults. I don't know. I'm still waiting for I, that I'm to happen. Still, I'm still trapped in my 20-year-old. Yeah. Face. So, I mean, I, I think I'm more like a kid than ever. Yeah, so do I. You know, I'm playing with turtles. I'm running around interviewing yeah. guys like you. Yep. It's pretty rad, man. I love you. I love you, man. You're, I'm stoked. You're the best. No, I'm so glad I got a chance to come out here and, and peek into your life and see what's going on. And I'm sure we're going to do some other things because I'd like to get out with you because one of the big things you told me you want to get, I think you might have got it, but we can go find timber rattlesnake somewhere oh, get some photographs. So That's like my holy, holy grail. All right, so maybe next year we'll do another episode with you. Uh, we'll come up to Jersey and uh, I'll, I'll back you up on the vehicle, man, so we can go a little further and yeah. maybe get a, a timber rattler up here. That'd that, be sick. That would be awesome. I only got one like four years ago, I okay. think it was. Yeah. And I've only ever seen two. Man. And what's the name of it? Jeff Cron Photography? Uh, JeffCron.com. JeffCron.com. If you guys want to see some beautiful photos, check them out. And you can also purchase them right from Jeff. 
which would be great because it helps keep Jeff in turtles. So uh, go ahead. Yeah. We, we got to help our turtle brethren out. All right, guys. Jeff, love you. Good seeing you. Yeah, man. Good we'll, seeing you. We'll hang again soon, man. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thanks for letting us in here. No problem.